the Downpatrick Declaration. The history of Ireland is a reminder of the complexity of community and identity and of the devastation of violence. Our peace process marks a break with centuries of conflict on this island. The Belfast Good Friday Agreement establishes vital principles for recognising one another and for peacefully acknowledging and resolving differences. People might be wondering where the Dan Patrick Declaration comes from and it's been developed very recently by a group of people, many of them with backgrounds in the peace movement, who were utterly shocked by the granting of funds to a firm in Belfast by the UK government to produce military drones. Military drones being produced in Belfast, the city that became synonymous with the Troubles and that then gave its name to the Belfast Good Friday Agreement. The agreement to move away from violence, develop understanding and build a more peaceful and sustainable society. And people began to ask themselves, is this the peace dividend we've been promised? And while we were developing the declaration, we had in the other part of the island, in Dublin recently, a publicly advertised webinar run by our government, a Zoom seminar if you like, promoting arms production as a way of developing the Irish economy. Again, in conflict with the basic principles of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement uh, and of course with Article 29 uh, of our Constitution. Maybe I'll read what the governments have said about the Belfast Good Friday Agreement where they make the following solemn declaration. We affirm our total and absolute commitment to exclusively democratic and peaceful means of resolving differences on political issues and our opposition to any use or threat of force by others for any political purpose, whether in regard to this agreement or otherwise. And it's very hard to square military drones in Belfast, arms production webinars in Dublin with those values. And of course it's very hard to square it with our participation with and through NATO in the dreadful war on terror, where we've seen most recently the appalling consequences in Afghanistan. This is not what people have signed up for. The Downpatrick Declaration is so called because we see Downpatrick as a place which is regarded as part of our history associated with three iconic figures, Bridget, Patrick and Colum Kill, all of whom were aware of the dangers of violence, all of whom dedicated themselves to peace. I talked about things that were really difficult to believe, but something in a way even more bizarre is that there are reliable reports that a company is currently developing a program to train pigeons, the doves of peace, for war, to fly into drones, to destroy the drones. That must be a deeply ironic 1500th birthday present for Columba the Dove, Colum Kill. I think this is a real cause for celebration. This declaration, the Downpatrick Declaration, is very beautiful, but it's very important. I remember when it was announced that the executive and all those people had agreed the Good Friday Agreement. My husband Jack and I danced in the kitchen <laughs> because we were so happy that at last the guns were being put up and there was serious, serious involvement in trying to find the solutions. You know, we in Ireland know the cost of violence and war because we have put up with violent ethnic political conflict for nearly 40 years and we only have in the north one and a half million people and yet our conflict kept going on and on and on and we didn't know how to stop it because once violence gets out of control it's very hard to stop it. We know that violence is always wrong. Violence never solves problems. Violence and militarism and war are part of the problem. They're not the solution. The Downpatrick Declaration challenges the military-industrial complex, 
which suggests that producing more weapons and arming ourselves to death can be a sound basis for prosperity on this island and for supporting peace and development around the world. Ireland, rather than becoming a Johnny-come-lately in the war industry, should draw on its unique history of colonialism and oppression to work for genuine peace, true human security and real disarmament. We should stand in solidarity with the poor, the dispossessed and those who've been driven from their homes by war, weapons and climate change. The millions of refugees and displaced people, indeed our planet itself, are crying out not for more weapons or warmongering, but for peace and an end to conflict and violence. How many times must a cannonball fly before they be forever banned? Well, they'll fly just as long as there's fortunes to be made by the wheelers and the dealers of arms. And fellow profiteers who manufacture fear to ensure that their wars will survive. The answer is not blown in the wind no more. The answer stares you in the eyes. We have had for a long time missiles made in Belfast by Talies and they're sold right around the world to 50 or 60 different countries including lots of dodgy regimes. Now Talies are developing laser and energy field weapons for the British Ministry of Defence and Spirit Air Systems are developing drones for the RAF. In the Republic there is a concentrated effort by the government to get firms and Irish industrialists involved in the European arms production industry. The Minister for Foreign Affairs, Simon Coveney, the Minister for Defence as well, says this has nothing to do with Irish neutrality, but of course it is. And the end result of that will be you have a European army fighting resource wars of the latter part of the 21st century, and that is a terrible prospect. The Dan Patrick Declaration is a positive repost to all these developments and saying, we can do without this, we can go a different path, the path of peace the path of justice. Both governments display the mindset of what US President Eisenhower 60 years ago called the military industrial complex. They suggest that producing weapons of war can be a sound basis for prosperity on this island and for supporting peace and development in the wider world. We challenge them as joint guarantors of the peace process to show how this could be so. Weapons not only kill and maim, they also wreck homes and habitats and damage our ecology. They distort and distract from the real challenges of security. They deflect resources of mind and matter from worthwhile production. They undermine the good work of governments, NGOs and others for disarmament, peace and development. Instead, producing a tragic tide of suffering and displacement. After Thousands of people in 1976 walked in Northern Ireland. They just said, we reject militarism and war and all the techniques of violence. We dedicate ourselves to working with our neighbours near and far for a peaceful solution to our conflict. Now that was a simple message, but that is a profound message. Our roots are ones of peace, reconciliation, caring for the poor. We sent out around the world people like Colm Gill, whose anniversary is today. They went out with the message of love and reconciliation and helping the poor. That, that's our heritage. That's our real heritage. So by the Irish government neglecting or ignoring its neutrality, it has left us in a very dangerous position. Ireland, through joining the like of the battle groups in Europe, we are supported by our very presence 
the militarization and the rearmament and the growth of European militarism. The very things we fought against because we don't believe that militarism solves the problem. Both here in Ireland and around the world, it is possible to find peace, to build peace. Peace is possible. Thank you.